knowing what I know today, if I could go back in time, what advice would I give myself about software engineering? Here's some no-nonsense advice to everyone that is new to software engineering. These are things I wish I knew when I first started programming. Get really good at one language instead of being average at three. When I was doing my undergrads, the courses were based on C++. And for some reason, I thought that C++ was a very old language and I wanted to learn modern languages, which at that time was things like Java. So on top of my courses, I would spend so much extra time trying to learn Java, JavaScript, CSS, HTML, and things like that. But when I got my first job, none of those were useful. I had to learn PHP. Then I went on to do my master's degree and there, the curriculum was based on Java and Python. And I was really happy. I was finally able to work with modern languages and I was pretty ecstatic. But on the first week of my master's degree, I realized that I lacked a lot of skills about compilers and advanced algorithms that I should have covered in my undergrads that now felt like had left a void because I was too obsessed about learning all these different languages and frameworks. At that moment, I wished that I'd focused more on what my college was teaching me, even though it was in a language that I didn't like, instead of focusing on 10 different things and sort of become a jack of all trades, but master of none. After my master's degree, I started working at Epic Systems, which is a huge healthcare software company. There, they used an even older language called Intersystems Cache. And in my next job, I had to learn ASP.NET. And for my startup, we used Python and Django. And during my time at Microsoft, I worked on C-sharp, Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, to name a few. So don't worry about learning 10 different languages when you're just starting. If you want a good software engineering career, you will be learning languages and frameworks your entire life. There's a lot of time to do that. When you're starting though, it's time to focus on the core foundations and fundamentals of computer science. Regardless of what language that is, C++, Java, Python, whatever your college is teaching you, focus on the fundamentals because that will take you a long way. My second advice to you is write less code. This may sound counterintuitive, but the more experienced I became in software engineering, the less code I wrote. It wasn't because I was doing something else. I was still a software engineer. It was because I was spending way more time thinking about what I was going to code instead of actually coding. Making sure that we've gathered the requirements properly. Making sure that we've iterated over the idea multiple times. Making sure that we brought in the stakeholders for feedback. And also making sure that we've thought of every angle that could potentially change in the future. Things like requirements, features, budget, and other resources. And even at that stage, you build mockups. And if they're functional enough, you get a small set of users to use them and get feedback and do experiments on A-B testing. And most of the times you go back to the drawing board again. Only when you're absolutely convinced and have spent enough time on the design and architecture and requirements and all the things that I've just mentioned, do you write the code. Writing the code from a fully sketched out and fleshed out idea is one of the most trivial parts of software engineering. Any capable programmer can translate a well thought out design into code, but not everybody can come up with a great design. So the next time you rush to write code, take a step back and think about your design over and over and over until you're absolutely convinced that what you're about to code is the right thing. Software engineering as a career, especially when you're working for someone else, is not always fun. I'm sure you've all seen the day in life videos. They're not lying. That is how it is. Especially at big tech companies, they have a lot of amazing perks. You have free food, gyms, and a lot of benefits that some individuals utilize and some don't. You have a lot of freedom. You can work from eight to five, work from home, or work 12 hours a day and utilize of all those perks like going to the sauna or going for a quick workout or getting free food. However you manage your time or how long you stay in the office or how quickly you leave, nobody cares. But because nobody cares about your attendance, your performance is based on what you deliver. 
and the projects are hard. You'll be working on state-of-the-art problems that not many other companies have solved before. So even if you do want to work your typical eight-hour days or 40-hour weeks, it's not always like that. Sure, there are days when you work for three hours and there's a happy hour or a company event where you socialize with your colleagues and things like that. But there are also those days that you work for 10 hours, 12 hours, 16 hours. It's not because you're required to, you're not. It's because what you're working on is difficult. You're working with scale that not many other companies see. You are trying to solve problems that nobody else has. And even the projects that you work on aren't always fun. You don't always get to pick the best and most fun projects. It's a job. You have to do what needs to get done, right? And some top tech companies also have a strong PIP culture. Uh, PIP means performance improvement plan. That basically means that you did not perform according to expectations and you are sort of on your way out to getting fired. So it is competitive. It is a lot of pressure. Yes, it is a lot of fun as well. So when you do watch the day in life videos and think about all the amazing benefits and perks and compensation these companies have, please keep in mind that you're also signing up for the not so fun part of being a software engineer, especially at top tech companies or very small startups. Being a great programmer will only take you so far in your career. So you've got your fundamentals of data structures and algorithms down and you've prepped for the interviews and you've finally aced your Microsoft or Facebook or Google or Amazon interview. Congrats, you're now an expert at Kruskal's algorithm for finding the minimum spanning forest of an undirected edge weighted graph. But sorry to disappoint, you will likely never use it again. You'll definitely reap the benefits of being good at data structures and some of the foundational algorithms, but that will only take you so far in your career until you learn how to architect or design software. For most real world software that you build, you don't really need to worry about those micro optimizations. For example, if you use the sort function of any modern language, you don't really need to worry about the time complexity. It will be pretty optimal. Or if you want to implement a search feature, you're not going to write a try from scratch. In the real world, software engineers or teams of software engineers design systems. By that, I don't mean the system design that you study for your interviews. What I mean is building good software as a whole. Software that is built on top of extensible, reusable, and modular code. If all you do is write a function here, a function here that is very well optimized, you will never get to the senior position. And you will quickly realize that in the frenzy of taking all those computer science courses in school and the chaos of solving gazillion algorithmic puzzles for your interviews, no one really taught you how to build good software. And that's the reason you need a mentor. When you walk into your manager's office on day one of your new job, your first question to them should be, who is my mentor? Because all the things that I mentioned in the previous point that nobody teaches you, a good mentor will. Because they have the desire and the experience to teach and train others. Your mentor could be your manager or your friend or your colleague or somebody that doesn't even work with you. That's okay. But find one. Because they will be the biggest accelerator of your career as a software engineer. And when you become successful and get to that coveted senior or principal role, keep the cycle of learning going and mentor other junior engineers. Your experience is worth much more when you share it with others. And finally, don't compare yourself with other software engineers, whether they're your friends or colleagues. Imposter syndrome is pretty real. And the more you compare yourself with others, the more it will get a hold of you. If you think you're good, that's great, keep it up. If you think you suck, Find your weaknesses and keep improving. Comparing your attributes to others doesn't do any good. Don't pay too much attention to who else you think is smarter or went to a better school, earns more, gets promoted more, none of that. People do better or worse for various reasons. The most important part is for your trajectory to continually go up. That means for you to continually improve. I'll tell you a personal story. I had the biggest imposter syndrome. I thought, everybody was smarter than me. And I seriously believed that I would get fired within a year. I'd be scared to ask questions in meetings because I thought they were stupid. I wouldn't talk about my projects because I would think that they had some flaw that I didn't know about. And things like that would play in my head all the time. 
In the first few years, it seriously impacted the quality of work that I could do. And at one point, I decided that I cannot continue like that forever. So I said, fuck it. If I get fired, I get fired. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on doing my best and not worry about anything else. And over time, I realized that all those thoughts, all those feelings were just in my head and none of that mattered. I also got blessed with amazing managers and amazing colleagues and mentors. But long story short, when I started at Microsoft, I spent the first few years full of insecurities, feeling like an imposter. But the moment I let all of that go and focused on my own performance, everything was perfect. And I don't mean to brag when I say this, but in the next six years, I got promoted five times. So the lesson to learn here is when we feel like we are an imposter, our questions are stupid, our projects are flawed, we are putting too much attention to ourselves. No one cares. No one has time to think that much about you. No one cares what you wear. No one cares what you eat. No one cares what you think. Everyone has busy lives. Everyone has their own stresses. So the fact that we think that the world revolves around us, even though it's in a sad and negative sense, it's not true. So be yourself, express yourself, be open, ask questions. If it's stupid, laugh about it. It's not a big deal. The only thing that matters is that you work hard, be kind, and help others. I'll see you in the next video.